Good morning, everybody. Oh, Sunday. I'm just doing the dishes and doing last night's tea dishes and a couple of breakfast dishes. Today is wheat. Um, it's wet and raining. I've been up since about half past 20 past five. Um, I edited yesterday's vlog because I didn't do it last night. And then when Evan got up, I, um, I caught his hair. Like that much off it because it was like mega bush. So I gave him a haircut. I did ask him if I could uh, vlog it. He said no. So I will respect him. Oh, I'm just going to wash dishes with bare hands because my hands are sticky from the water and we don't want that on. Oh, it's hard to get the gloves on, isn't it? I'm still thinking. Plans for today. Um, once I've had a clean up, I need to vacuum again because yesterday when I brought that chook, chook feed inside, um, I accidentally knocked the bag over and the top split and I ended up with corn everywhere. I did sweep up as much as I could but it needs a vacuum and now we've got the hair added to the mix. I do it on the hard floor and I sweep it up. You know what the hair's like, it gets everywhere. Um, so that, so I'm just really all I have to do is dishes and vacuuming. I do have to change our sheets. I do that on the weekend every week. Then I'm going to film a podcast. Now, as you guys might know, if you're if you're following me because you're a knitter, it's currently Soptober. And if you follow me on Instagram, have a look at my stories. I have shared not all but a good chunk of my friend Kelly's socks. She's Kelly Menzies. Um, she has the pod knitting podcast called That Row Row on Cades Knitting Podcast. I will I will link her Ravelry store and her um, and her podcast in the description of this video during um october she's i think it's like buy two is it buy two and get the third one free i'll put it on the screen um what the actual promotion is if you're too afraid to knit socks like you've never knit socks like I'm never really afraid to do anything, but I have to say socks probably did intimidate me a little bit. Um, Kelly's sock patterns are so well written. You just, she explains, she writes them in a way that it's pretty much idiot proof. So she explains everything. Um, which means you know you're, oh, and she's already she's already sort of um, addressed whatever that question is in in her instructions. She's really good. Um, she most of the ones that I've shared are fingering weight socks, but she does have one. Um, that I've shared which is a DK sock and that is the Ballad of the Tenderfoot. I knit mine with a single strand of 
fingering weight sock yarn that I'd hand dyed myself and a strand of mohair, silk mohair and oh they're so fluffy I ended up buying a whole lot of single skeins of mohair from um, drops mohair from the wool warehouse a little while ago just so that I can make a heap of her socks for winter because they're so warm Make, not making too much banging noises um, however in anticipation of eventually doing a bit of yarn dyeing to sell I had purchased some DK sock yarn so it has a bit of nylon in it so like, like the four flies so that people who don't really want to be knitting on really tiny needles and literally whip up a pair of socks in next to no time. So I'm going to have a play around with that. I should have done it in the holidays, but I just, I literally had so much to do around the property these holidays. Um, I don't really have time for that. I was also going to, um, I got given a sack of wool clippings, you know, from shearing um, from a friend's farm, but it's, I don't know what the quality or grade of the wool is, I know nothing, I don't even know what breed it is, but I gratefully accepted it because it would be awesome to learn how to, to, to just practice the techniques involved with um, yeah, scouring wool in there. So I was going to do that. As, I actually almost thought about doing that on on Friday, but by the time my visitors had left, I just felt like doing nothing. It does involve heating up quite a bit of water so that it's hot. I think that's probably why I haven't haven't done that. What did you think of Digger stealing his pillow? That was so funny. Comedy gold, I tell you. He was a little bugger this morning. He started whining at about five o'clock to be let out to go to the toilet. So I got up the back door he was sitting by the back door waiting to be let out I opened the door he took one step out and went, mm, it's raining and he ran back inside so I ended up chucking him up on the bed next to me so that I would know if he really needed to go to the toilet again and tried to go back to sleep but um by that stage, my knees were aching, my hips were aching. My body was saying, it's time to get out, lady. So, that is what I did. Just making sure that's clean. Uh, what else do I need to wash, guys? I need to take that, that. Wash these coffee filters. That. I am still here. I'm just emptying some coffee grinds into the into the discard pile. Right. I'm just gonna let the dishes drip dry. I can come back to those later. It's not too cold outside. I might try and podcast in the um, uh, what do you call it? Arch Gola area. Ah, that's itchy. I'm just going to give this pan a really quick wipe out, scrambled eggs out of there. That um, 
big fat egg. I did crack it and it was a double yoker. But you know, quite often double yokers have smaller than average yolks. These were larger than average yolks. That poor girl, only a woman that has experienced childbirth can really truly empathise with squishing out a big fat egg like that. And to think, those poor girls do that on the daily. <laughs> right, I think that's everything clean. And do that. Whip out the old vacuum cleaner. And we'll be away. So I'm just about to hop in the shower. And... I thought I'd tell you a little story. So I'm going to swivel the camera around. So in our bathroom, we have, like most people, somewhere to store our toothbrushes and our toothpaste. I use this little antique milk jug. It's very pretty. But like most receptacles, it gets scody in the bottom of it. And I'm just too lazy to be bloody cleaning it out every single day. So I do it once or twice a week. And in the interim, I pour a little bit of Savicol in the bottom just for hygiene purposes. A little while ago, I noticed that Evan had started to put the toothpaste in with the cap down the bottom. Now I always put it in like that, right? Excuse, I don't know why I always rinse my toothbrush but I always end up with heaps of crud down the neck of mine so please excuse that. And so he would put it in cap first and you'd end up with all this grotty stuff on it and then I'd have to wipe it off because that's close to the stuff that's going to go in my mouth. And finally, I said something to him because it was bugging the shit out of me and I don't know why he's just started doing it. His response was, um, what did he say to me? His response was, it's too fat to get in there. It is not. So we had a bit of a laugh and the next day I come in and I found the toothpaste sitting like that. And then the following day, I found the toothpaste sitting like that. And it went on and on and on. Then yesterday, I came in and my toothbrush was missing. And I found it tucked in here. Then today, I came in <laughs> the toothpaste was there. So, here's a little bit of entertainment for you. So that was my podcast done. Done, edited, uploading. Excuse me, as we speak. And I thought, hmm, what else can I do on this lazy Sunday? So I have filled a large pot with water. <coughs> I had a scorched almond. I'm stuck in my throat. And I'm going to have a go at scouring that wool. So we'll see how we go. Right, I poured some hot water in here. So let's see. Let's see what we can do. Mm. Right. So this is my sack of wool, it's pretty gross. So I've made a mesh bag out of old sheer curtain fabric, it's just off cuts. So I'm just going to pop this in here, we'll see if this works. Oh, yeah. 
is a lot of grass on here. I'm just going to do half of it for now because this is an experiment. So let's just pop this into here and we'll see what happens. My little baggy situation. <laughs> This is not a tutorial because I don't know what I'm doing. Ugh. Ugh. Ugh, look at that. I better go and get some gloves. Ah. Right, I'll just put you back on there. I'm just going to get some gloves. Right, these are gloves that I use that are going to be used for dyeing. So. water. What I'll do is I'll let it soak for a little while and then we will empty that water and we'll add some dishwashing liquid to it. It's quite, it's quite satisfying actually. So we'll leave that for a bit and um, we'll see how we go. It's very interesting. I'll show you <laughs> the state of the water. Mm. Oh, there's the water there. You can sort of see it against the um, the sack. So we'll give that another 10-15 minutes and then we'll come back in. Let's have a little lie down. It wasn't a long one. Digger and I were on here and there was so much warmth coming out of him I just snuggled into him, put a blanket over me. And I was watching um, Yana from Finished Knitting Stories. And then she finished and Mariette from De Bro Bovru. What's her, what's her podcast called? Oh, I can't remember her pro podcast name. Um, Crafty Stitches started watching her and then Jess came in and she put the air fryer on and she was going to make loaded wedges and I was like oh yes please and I started I kept waking up snoring and then I woke up to um Ruth loves to knit was just starting on oh, Ruth so um yeah I've had her playing in the background while I went in did some more soaks of that wool. I've I took it out of its baggie for its third wash and soap. And then I just went through it while it was in the hot water and just picked out as much crap and grass and stuff as I could. Um so I'll show you that in a minute and I'll show you what came out of it. I'm just trying to think of a way to dry it. So I think I might grab one of the earring racks, put it on, on the deck, put an old sheet over the top, and then just lay it out on that, air dry it. That should be the one, bro. So that's some crap I got out of it. There's more in there, obviously, but... Um, I can pick 
that out as it dries. So, let's see. It's the towel I use. So I could sit up there and try and unblock the gutter again. Right, I've just used this um, uh, sarong. Oops. So we're just gonna, because it, it's light enough to dry real easily. Set you up on the table. And tilt. Tilt. That's good. Oh, right. Grass. Right, this is the scene here, but I will also include the trailer for the movie. Come on, guys, let's try and make this happen. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. It's now quarter to six. I would have <clears throat> done a bit more over the course of the afternoon, but I got a surprise visit from Evan's mum. She doesn't really pop out here that much, but yesterday I um, saw her at Speedway and I'd said to her to come out and have a cup of coffee and catch up on what's been happening here. And she just turned up, which was really nice. It was a nice surprise. And she bought some um, empty egg cartons for me and a little bag of um, passion fruit. And she also bought me um, a birthday gift. I've never tried doing this before, so it'll be really interesting. It is acrylic resin casting kit. There's all sorts of goodies in here. See what's in there? So that's a interesting um, example of the kind of things that you can do uh i did pull some venison mints out for tea but then i thought oh jess is out at pickleball evan came home um while his mum was here um so when she left i actually sent jess a message and i said oh you want to get us some takeaways while you're in town so uh she got us some turkish so we had early turkish it was called to five when we had it um I've still got heaps of my kebab left because it was huge. I normally get a small one, but she got me a large one. So we had that, and I had actually pulled some pastry out of the freezer in order to do um, some dessert. I thought I'd make little pies and um, put that rhubarb, apple, raspberry mix, stewed mix that I did the other day. And I was going to whip up some custard and put that on top. And we'll have that for a late pudding since we ate our tea so early. Evan has popped out again to, um, because this weekend is Bathurst, the Bathurst race. So if... If you're in Australia, you know, and New Zealand, you know what Bathurst is. It's this massive V8 car race at a place called Bathurst in Australia. Um, it's usually quite a big thing here. Normally, guys all get together and they have drinks and sit on armchairs all day and watch the racing all day. Evan hasn't really been drinking um, because um, for his health so um, he worked most of today so he's just going to go over to his friend's house to watch the last bit of that racing so that's left me a bit of free time because I was sitting here thinking oh, it's hard vlogging when he's around it's a bit awkward update on the rats now if you're squeamish look away now because this is a slightly gross story 
So last night we were sitting here and I I had been watching YouTube but Evan had come home and I had paused the TV because we we're all, you know, we we're having tea and chatting and what have you. And we heard the trap go, ting! And then we heard all this thumping. And I was like, oh God, that rat's dying in there. So I quickly turned the TV on and turned it up so that we didn't have to listen to it dying. And then we forgot about it. And then Evan came home tonight and he goes, this afternoon, and he said, <coughs> have you taken the rat out of the trap? And I was like, no. And he goes, oh, his mate sort of eaten him then. And I was like, Really? Sure enough, he opened it and all that was left was its head and its spine. They're so brutal. And then he threw it in the rubbish bin. I suppose where else was he going to put it, but... So gross. So reset the trap. <laughs> but I've, I've suggested that maybe he might like to go under the house and check around where the um, drain pipe is for the sink and block up any holes because they must be getting in somehow. Yuck, yuck, yuck. So there you go. If you're a bit squeamish, I'm sorry, but that's the rat story. Definitely had to have been who stole the bread because if Digger had eaten that bread, there would have been plastic in his poo and there has not been any plastic in his poo. Just in case you were interested in that. Um, I'm getting there. I'm on the second green stripe now. It's looking good. Uh, yeah. Did I tell you that we just finished watching the first episode of the second season of Loki? It was really good. Really exciting. So I'm going to turn the oven on now. And then I think I'll make up a really thick custard. And I'll make up those pies so that we can have them later. And I'm just going to probably just go on YouTube and see if there's any more Vlogtobers popped up. Um, yeah. So I will see you soon. So they have their filling in them. And I'm just going to get to this through the magic of TV. I'm just going to... I'm going to put too much on because there'll be enough left over to be able to um, pour some over the pies anyway. How does that look? Super delicious. Yum. There they go. I never make pretty food, guys. It's all about function. Oh, they're getting there. I hear hissing. That's because we're having an explosion. Damn it. I have to wipe that off the floor of the oven when it's cooled down. There you go, people. Yum. 